In this presentation, we will continue on with our statement of cash flows using the indirect method looking in on the change in accounts payable. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We're going to be using this information, our comparative balance sheet, income statement, and other information focusing primarily on comparative balance sheet, creating a worksheet with it looking like this. This basically being the comparative balance sheet, but in a post-closing trial balance format. We have our two periods and the difference between those periods here. Our goal is to find a home for all of these differences. Once we do so, we'll end up with basically the change in cash, that being our bottom line that we're looking for. We've gone through this information in terms of the cash flows from operations. We're currently looking through the current assets and now we're moving on to the current liabilities. So we've looked at the accounts receivable, the inventory, the prepaid expenses. We have these here. We're moving on now to a liability. And notice when we do that, when we're working from the worksheet, we're kind of skipping over some things here. And there's two ways we can do this worksheet. We could go through one by one, line by line, and try to figure out which where each of these lines go, whether it be cash flows from operating, investing, or financing. Or we can kind of skip and what this is what probably is done more often. And we can do the cash flows from operating first because that's primarily where we look at. So, if, you know, that's that's where most of the activity is going to be on and work from top to bottom on the cash flow statement. So when we go through these accounts, we can see, okay, cash, well, even though that's on the top of my worksheet, it's down here on the cash flow statement. That's our bottom line. And then when we go to accounts receivable, we're going to move to accounts, the current assets, and then the current liabilities. So accounts receivable is current. We worked with that. Inventory is current. We worked with that. Prepaid expense is current. We worked with that. And then equipment, not current. That's something that's not a current asset or liability. So what we do that is we could just say, okay, this specifically says current assets and liabilities, so it's not going to go here. Or we can think through it and say, well, equipment, when I buy equipment or sell equipment, typically a debit cash, I mean a debit equipment and credit cash or loan doesn't have anything to do with the income statement, therefore not part of the cash flows from operating typically. When we sell the equipment, then we typically get cash and credit equipment. Um, we might have a gain, but really the principal part of it isn't part of uh, the income statement either. So equipment doesn't really belong on the statement of, of um, operations, of the cash flows from operations. It's going to go in investing activities. And then if we go down to the accumulated depreciation, same thing. We actually already did that. We dealt with that in depreciation. That difference is within depreciation. And then we've got the accounts payable, and that's a current liability, which it lists right here that we're going to look at changes in current assets and current liabilities. So we're here looking at this change in accounts payable then. Now, we already did all these current assets, and we noted this kind of terminology. We figured out what happened with, with accounts receivable. We noted that when there's an increase over here, uh, it's going to decrease over here. <laughs> and when there's a decrease over here, it's going to increase over here for current assets. Now we're going to liabilities and we could say, well, it's going to be the opposite, meaning here's our, here's our terminology now. If it, if it increases on our worksheet, it's going to decrease on our cash flow statement. It's going to reduce net income. So again, we could just figure out accounts receivable, the logic of it. And once we have that, apply that same logic to all other current assets and just reverse it. Same logic being, would indicate this reversal on the liabilities it being the opposite uh, then but then we want to think through this it's, it's also useful to think through it in terms of accounts payable so i would think through these in terms of accounts receivable and accounts payable as to why we're increasing or, or decreasing these changes so for example here in, in the prior period we had 102,000 in accounts payable went down to 17,750 decrease of 84 to 50. that decrease um, that decrease is going to decrease the uh, the net income on the cash flow statement. Whereas if we were talking about a decrease in a current asset, it would increase. So let's think about that. And so we're basically looking at when there's going to be an increase and when there's going to be a decrease. The two types of transactions for accounts payable. So when does accounts payable go up? Uh, typically, let's think about an expense. We're not going to think about inventory because that's going to muddy the waters a, a bit. So let's just simplify this process and say that we, we had an expense on account. 
So we're going to credit the accounts payable, uh, something we owe in the future, and we're going to credit the expense. And we know that the expense then is going to be an income statement account. And that's why we're dealing with the income statement. So this will simplify the process. If we go through through inventory, of course, then we, it'll, we'll get to the same result, but it'll be a bit longer of a step to go through. This will be a nice, easy two-step, just as we did with uh, the accounts receivable. So if we go to our T account, then, of course, accounts payable is going up with a credit, so it's increasing with a credit. When does accounts payable go down? Well, it goes down when we pay cash and we debit the accounts payable. So these are the two things that are happening. They're happening a lot. So if we looked at the, the GL, there'd be a lot of activity. But what we're looking for in total is what's happening in total. And so if accounts, if accounts payable goes up, that means that this is happening more than this. So in essence, this happened more often. So we can think about like in total, this is kind of what happened more often if accounts payable increased, meaning like the credit balance is, is winning. It went up in the credit direction, it increased. Well, if that's the case, then we had recorded these expenses, which decreases net income, for which cash was not yet paid. And so on, on a, a cash basis, we shouldn't have done that, right? We have to reverse that. So we have a decrease in the net income that shouldn't be there, and we need to then increase it back, put it back in there. So that, that is why when there's an increase in accounts payable, and we're going to apply the same logic to any liability, then we're going to increase it on the cash flow because we've got to add it back in there because what happened is we had this expense that brought it down which wasn't cash related therefore we have to add it back if on the other hand if we look at all the transactions in this activity and we know that accounts payable went down then in total this transaction happened more than this one so more more happened more this one so we can think in aggregate basically this happened and what happened over here? Well, uh, we decreased cash. We paid cash. Cash went out. That's going to be part of our cash flow. And the other side being accounts payable, it's not an expense. We're not recording the net income at this point in time, even though the cash flow went out. So if accounts payable went down, we've got to, we've got to record this cash flow that went that uh, went down. That's why when cash flow goes down, we are going to when accounts payable goes down we are going to record a decrease in the cash flow statement. You can also think of it, of course, that we're paying cash here. When did we record the expense? Probably last year, last time period. We recorded the expense at the point in time that we, inc that we incurred it. So we incurred the expense and put it into accounts payable here, and now we're taking it out. But under a cash basis, we should be recording that expense at the point in time cash was spent. And it's not happening on this transaction. That's why we're going to have to decrease the cash flow when the accounts payable goes down. So once we go through this logic, then we can apply this logic to any liability, just as we did with the accounts receivable. And even it might be easiest to think about the accounts receivable, too, because revenue uh, makes net income goes up. And it's a little bit easier to think about. Uh, oftentimes to go through accounts receivable also you won't be thinking about things like inventory when you think about revenue and then just apply the reverse <laughs> to any types of liabilities but just from a theory standpoint it's, it's useful to think about both of them it's useful to think through the accounts payable what's happening here why are we doing this to uh, the net income so once you have that once we've thought through that then we can just write this down have a little cheat sheet and say well if there's an increase in our worksheet on a liability, then we are going to increase our cash flow. If there's a decrease on our worksheet, then we're going to decrease the cash flow here. Once we have all this set up, then that's our that's going to be our last um, current portion. So uh, we're we're then going to sum these items up. And when we when we sum them up, it's it's common to not pick all these up. Remember, we're going all the way back up to the top here. So we're picking up the net income the depreciation, and then the accounts receivable inventory prepaid expense accounts payable to get to this 51,650. We brought it to the inner column and then summing this up to the outer column. Uh, these don't represent debits and credits. This represents a summing of, uh, you know, just a, a subtotal in the inner column of the cash flows from operations that we then break out and we're going to call it net cash flows from operating activities. Now this one is usually cash flows from 
But just note the terminology. If if we if cash flow went down, <laughs> we'd have to say used in or something like that to, to indicate in the words the decrease. So whenever we do these cash flows, uh, we'd have to we have to be a little bit more careful in terms of um, of the terminology as well when we finalize this. This is basically just more of a worksheet to get the numbers um, the numbers worked out. Also note that we still have to make adjustments to net income, depreciation, and loss. So we're not done. But we're going we're gonna to find a home for all of these numbers, and then we're going to go back and make those adjustments. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.